Just like uh, the diamond hand pads, which come in different grits, these two come in grits, and, and these grits are fairly standard in the, indus in the industry. Um, and the color codes on the back, the different colors of the pads are somewhat standard. Uh, this is sort of greenish color for 50 and red for 100 is fairly standard. Sometimes the 200 is yellow, sometimes it's black. Um, or like in the hand pad, it's red. So it's not really a standard. But it's a, an easy way for you to distinguish these. Uh, these numbers are um, darkened and melted into the fabric, so they're uh, very easy to see. These are the ones that, that I have um, designed and what makes these very very good quality is that for one they stay fairly flat uh, which is good they're fairly flexible too so if you're trying to work inside a curved surface uh, they flex very nicely but they also stay flat these have been used quite a bit in class and, and even though they dry out they don't they don't warp lots of diamonds all the diamonds are very high quality grade and they're all the same size which is important because if I have a in this case, I'm going to take a, a 200 grit pad. Fairly fine diamond. I don't want any kind of 50 grit diamonds in there because it's going to leave scratches. And on really low quality pads, the diamond gradation, the, the sizes of the diamond particles that are in there, is, is quite broad. So it might say 200 grit on the back, and there might be a few 200 grit diamonds in there, but most of them are probably finer than that, so they don't really cut. And there might be a few coarser ones that get through because of poor quality control. And those few larger diamonds leave big scratches in the surface. So you never get a good quality finish because this pad kind of does the work of, you know, hopefully it doesn't have any 50 grit, but 400, which doesn't cut nearly as aggressively as 200, and 100 grit, which leaves scratches that the 200 is supposed to take out. So the more expensive the pad, the tighter the gradation and the more uniform the diamonds sizes are and the quality. And that's what's very, very important, especially when you get to the finer grits. Um, 50 grit is going to leave a very dull surface. You're going to see the scratches. Its job is to take the gouges out of the turbo cup and to do heavy, aggressive cutting. The 100 grit is going to take away the scratches from the 50, and it's sort of a, a more moderate, aggressive tool. The 200 grit. Its job is to take the scratches out from the 100 grit. And if all you wanted to do is take the, the cream off and expose the sand grain, one step, 200. There's no need to keep going. You could, you could start and stop with 200 grit, and, and you only need this one pad. Um, because it's such an important pad, you want to make sure its diamonds are high quality. You don't want 100 grit scratches leaving gouges in the concrete that get filled with grout, and they show up. So this is where it pays to invest in a better tool. Um, the resin that holds the diamonds is a very high quality resin. It's not going to wear away quickly. And the spaces in between, these are very small little pads of concrete, uh, of, of diamond, but because they're small, it lets the pad be flexible and flex in all directions. L really large blocky pads don't flex very well, and I'll show you those in a second. But the spaces, the relative size of the spaces to the pad are quite large. So the cuttings flow out very easily. I have a, a variety of different uh, competitors' pads that I want to show you. And although they're good, uh, relatively speaking, some of the characteristics are not so, not so beneficial to you. Um, this, these style pads right here, are they start up very thin. This edge here um, is practically brand new. You can see how thin it is. Um, so you're getting very little diamonds. You know, look at that, it's twice as thick. Uh, very little diamonds. And look at how narrow these, these uh, slots are in comparison. They're one third as wide. So the, the little pads of, that have the diamonds in them, they're larger, yes. Um, but the, the spaces in between are very narrow. These are meant for granite. And granite pads, when you, when you hone granite, the cuttings are extremely fine. And they flow like water. When you cut, cut concrete, the cuttings are much coarser, and they clog the pad. And what happens is to a pad that's poorly designed, or designed for the wrong material, is the pad loads up, and then it wears away unevenly. And you can see how it's, the, the resin is worn all the way down to the fabric backing. So there's, there's areas that have worn very unevenly, and it's also 
Look at how flat that is and how these are actually the same grit. Uh, that's 100 grit. Let me compare the, the, the 200, the, the 100 grits. See how flat that is compared to how wobbly that is? And that's why it's wearing unevenly, is it never sits flat on the backer. So you might pay $15, $18 for a pad like this. It's junk. Um, the resin, it's the wrong resin. They're probably the wrong diamonds. Uh, they're designed wrong. You're not going to get a good quality finish. Same with this one. This is a different brand. Uh, instead of being straight lines, it has this swirl pattern. You can kind of see the loading. Also, you can see how this edge is worn. It's warped versus how flat that one is. And a um, lot of clogging, very narrow slots. Good sign that that's the wrong pad to use. So I'll show you some pads that have larger slots in them. Uh, this is a very common style, very, very thick diamonds. Um, yes, it's much thicker. Uh, it's about 50% thicker. But because it's thicker, it's much stiffer. And it, it too, is uh, warped. So this is a coarser grit. Um, just like a big truck tire, the, the, the treads, if you will, the slots let it, let it um, eject the cuttings. And that's a good design. I mean, you always want to see a nice, a, a wide path for the cuttings to come out. But, I mean, it's not flat. So you, this area here is barely getting used. And then this outside edge is wearing very unevenly. So you're not honing a flat surface. You're not maintaining a flat surface. It's, it's rocking. And then this pad here is supposedly a very high quality pad that doesn't scratch. It loads up and you can see it's, it's warped versus a 50 grit that's, that's flat. And because these, these little triangles are so, this is a very, I cannot bend this. It's, it's, it's flexible, but there's all kinds of edges to catch. You can't use that on anything that's flat but it won't stay flat. So this very, very high dollar pad, it's not gonna, not, it's not gonna work as well as, it, as, as it's promised to. So again, look for something that's nice and flat and smooth, it stays flat, but it's flexible. If I, if I wanna flex it, I can to conform inside a sink. Um, so these, these kind of are dual purpose. You get the flexibility of a thin, cheap pad, but you get the quality diamonds and the durability of a much thicker, more expensive pad. These, this cost maybe two or three times this. But this is very limited. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you could buy this, you could buy that, you could buy these. There's, you, there's many others on the market. But just be aware that just because it says diamonds, and it might say for concrete, um, odds are they're just saying that so that they have another market to sell to. These were designed for concrete, and they work, they work best on concrete.